Well, would you believe it? We're into another year already. Ah, uh, yes, it's 2019. The future's upon us. <sighs> yeah, I can't believe next year we'll be going into a new decade. That reminds me. We're going to do uh, shows from 1999. Actually, thinking about it, was it 1999 20 years ago? It was. Yep. 20 years ago. Two lots of decades. First, one lot of 10 years, and then another lot of 10 years. 10 plus 10 makes 20. Which means that we originally thought 1999 was like five years ago, but it's not. That makes us old, doesn't it? Yeah, we're so old! <laughs> Why? <laughs> Time is wasted over these years! Let's just start the podcast. Okay. Hello little peeps, welcome back to our podcast Between the Pond and this week we have a very interesting subject as you would have known from our cold opening. We are looking at 1999 but first off I'd like to introduce my co-host Mr Mike Mixtape. Hey! Yay! Hi there folks! <laughs> and I'm Steph Felton and uh, if you guys want to see our channels individually and see what we do i'm sure mike will put them in the description box below so yes so we are talking about the subject or this week's theme is 1999 20 years ago yes and not just for the comical purpose of doing a cold opening it literally was 20 years ago so for some of you that don't know what our podcast is even though this is the second episode and some people may have seen the first one basically i'm from the uk mike is from america <laughs> excuse me and we both grew up watching different things so basically we get to share stuff that we have seen from our from like our childhoods or things we watch already on the telly or films or something like that actually i thought the other day maybe we could do like a radio special and share with each other um, radio shows or something. It's a thought. Uh, it's an interesting that. thought. Okay, so basically, um, seeing that you went first last time, should I go first? Sure, why not? Okay, so I might as well get the obscure one out of the way. So the first one I got to see was Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century! Sorry, I've been wanting to do that joke. <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So, basically, uh, with this TV series, 1999, it was a, I believe it wasn't fully American. I think it was a collaboration between Britain and America. Yep. So, basically, uh, this um, I watched the pilot episode, which is always a good thing to do. Start with the first episode, because you know what's going on. So basically, it starts off with uh, Shark Holmes fighting Moriarty, or Libera not Liberati, uh, Liberace. That, <laughs> <laughs> that would have been that would have been that would have been interesting seeing Sherlock Holmes fight Liberace. Um, so basically, um, he's fighting the main villain of the Sherlock Holmes stories, and you see him fall off a ledge, Sherlock Holmes, to make you believe he died that day, but. Actually, he didn't die on that particular day. He died later on. So then we forward ourselves to so many years in the future, in the 22nd century. And basically, uh, the wonderful town of London and everything is modernised, so it's all future futuristic and things like that. Although most of the coast, uh, coast, most of the cast here have American accents, even though this is supposed to be set in London because there's a Baker Street. Go figure. Excuse me. 
So yeah, so they have to try, uh, but basically there's one thing that's been happening is that the famous villain, whose name I cannot remember or pronounce or things like that, shall we just call him Dr. Meany or something like that? But no, maybe not. Um, For those wondering, it's Professor James Moriarty. Moriarty! Ah, oh, there we go. So Moriarty possibly ha uh, so there's a possibility that moriarty is back for revenge and wanting to steal things and you know do the things that most villains usually do and whatever so they're trying to track him down even though everybody's telling this um secret agent girl he can't be around he's dead he's been dead for over 200 years or something like that you know it's like basically you're nuts love he's dead and buried and you know He's been dead for over 200 years. <clears throat> so basically, she's like, I know it's him. So what they do is that um, they have the corpse of J uh, Sherlock Holmes and they bring it back to life. I don't know how that would happen. How could you have a perfect corpse of someone who has been dead for 200 years? Okay, it'd, be so it'd be dust. Not okay, even a skeleton, so just a pile of dust. I, so I believe in the show he was... Uh, like cryo frozen, or I believe in a vat of honey. I think that's what it was. I think they said something about a vat of honey. I have to say, it has been a little while since I've watched this because I watched it ages ago for research and just been waiting to do the podcast and things like that. So, well, anyway, they, they I... bring back Mr. Sherlock Holmes, who, thank fuck, has. Whoop, see, mm, oh, I shouldn't have said that, it'd be demonetized, but. Jokes on you, YouTube. We do this for free. <laughs> <laughs> or as Mr. Rick Mel would say. <laughs> um, so basically, they bring back Mr. Sherlock Holmes, and luckily he has an English accent because it wouldn't be right if Sherlock Holmes had an American accent. The world would just implode. So basically, uh, they bring him back and then they start these new adventures of Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century. Sorry. <laughs> How could you not, like, with a title like Sherlock Holmes in the 22nd century? How could you not do a Duck Dodgers reference? You know. And yeah. if there's any youngsters out there who don't know what I'm referencing, put your fucking iPads down and watch some proper cartoons. <laughs> now we're acting really old now. Hey, Mac, in my day we watch Looney Tunes and Duck Dodgers. And proper teddy programs. Now where's me slim afraid? Oh, God, me back's gone. So... So yeah, um, so what can I say about this program? Try to recall it from memory. I have to say, some of the characters are really good, like uh, Dr. Watson, basically, is a robot mm -hmm. um, who unfortunately gets a lot of passive aggression thrown at him, bless him. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was quite interesting to have, you know, Watson as a robot, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember the life of me what the young lady is called. Uh, her name is Beth. Beth. Dr. Watson, Sherlock Holmes, and Beth. It's that, it just sounds so grand. Like, basically, Sherlock Holmes is like, elementary, my dear Watson. Dr. Watson, I'm here for you, Holmes. And then there's Beth. Hello! I'm Beth! <laughs> she, Are we going to solve some mysteries? <laughs> she has a full name, but I didn't want to mispronounce her last name. She's an inspector. So... It's me, Inspector Beth. Did somebody say Mr. Oz? <laughs> oh and he's cracked. And he's cracked. Dear God. Um, yeah. No, the, uh, the show is like, because, like, this was 20 years ago, I'm thinking, because I was nine going on 10. And I remember, like, seeing this. This was owned by Deke. And uh, Deke Entertainment and Deke. And uh, oh, the theme song. The people who did Where's Wally? Oh my god. The, uh, um, the theme song is like the best part of it, even though it's repetitive, but it's just like really catchy at most. And, uh, and it's something that will get you like pumped and ready for an adventure. Um, so the characters are pretty good with, you know, Sherlock Holmes, 
Dr. Watson and Beth. Um, the anima- <laughs> the animation, the animation, I have to give it credit because I had to give it the, the 1999 excuse and that kind of thing. Mind you, you know, the animation and that fair, the CGI and that fared a lot better than normal The North. I've never seen the film, the film, but I know there are uh, better things I could be doing with my time than watch that shit. So, so yeah, but I have to say the hand-drawn animation and CGI animation is pretty good. And I really like how they use, excuse me, CGI for the vehicles and stuff, you know, and how they fly around. And it is pretty inventive how they've like come up with like, you know, how you could imagine London in the 22nd century and, you know, there's, you know, flying cars and all that kind of thing. Even though in the 60s they said, oh, in 2019 we'll have flying cars. And what do we have? A tangerine for a president and an absolute idiot for a prime minister. Reach. It's true. You have to agree with me, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yes. Yeah, so sadly. anyway, <laughs> so yeah, um, so basically, I have to say, like, it's it's kind of hard to recall from memory because it has been a little while, and maybe I should have watched watched it over again recently. But there we are. So would I rewatch this program? Um, I would definitely recommend it for people that like adventure. You know, if you if you pretty much like the adventure. Um, genre I would highly recommend it for me I'm not really a kind of adventure person like I'm not really into the kind of adventure um, genre so would I watch this again unfortunately not yeah I mean this is a boy cartoon in a way as well because we boy we boys love Sherlock Holmes that's for sure I'm sure there might have been girls who originally watched it and enjoyed it just wait for the comments to pop up. I mean, screw it, Jen Rolls. If you, you know, recommend it for anyone, boy, girl, whatever, mongoose. Yeah. If you if you enjoy that sort of thing, go for it. It lasted two seasons, and it is available to buy the complete series. So, it's also on YouTube, so check it out if you want. Mm. Hey, hey. Mm. Brilliant. So, we've had a little taste of America. Let's go over to Britain. And I actually remember seeing the ads for this. Um, I remember seeing this advertised on the telly. Before I even say the show, before I even say the show, I have to be prepared to talk about these shows. And um, I got to put something on. And I know Steffi will get a kick out of this because you sent it to me. There we go. Union Jack, British flag. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> I got that. I got that for him when I went to Brighton. So I'm ready to go. Okay, we're talking about the Tweenies. Okay, we're talking about the Tweenies here, and this is a show that she just like adores. Like, I don't understand what it is. Okay, so the episode that she sh- showed me or recommended to me to watch is not actually from. 99 it's actually a later episode that later years so it counts because we're still talking about the the show show itself itself and the Um, show's first broadcasted in 1999 so we are still good with this i just want to clarify that if you're wondering because the episode itself is called favorite songs and you could look it up it's it's an episode called favorite songs (sighs) oh boy okay so the Tweenies is a show centered around four infant children known as the Tweenies. They are like playing, singing, dancing in a fictional nursery in England. They are carried by two adult Tweenies and two dogs. I'm reading from Wikipedia, by the way, so I just wanted to get that straight. Um, do not compare them to the Teletubbies because these kids are very much well-developed and able to communicate effectively. So, and it, it kind of, in production-wise, it kind of does have that Teletubbies feeling with the costumes and the everything else. But, the animatronic uh, heads and things. Yeah. 
So um, there are, hold on, I just wanted to say the characters because there are, okay, holy shit. There's only four tweenies in the episode, and I'm trying to remember which is which. Fuck. Oh, it's a children's show. Um, it's a family picture from I, hell. <laughs> there is Bella, Milo, Fizz, Jake. Uh, let's see. Doodles. Kids. Yeah. There's other characters like Izzles, Max, Judy. And sometimes, it wasn't in this episode, but Max's sister Polly comes along in the show. Mm-hmm. So the episode... Yeah. In the... Okay, so the basic premise of favorite songs is that the Tweeties have a favorite song. And they have to choose which one they want is their favorite. And they decided, oh, let's do like a Top of the Pops kind of, you know, countdown of our favorite songs. And they organize it, you know, just like how it is. They go through... I mean, at first, they do... Uh, I think that they inspired that idea because they were singing Wheels on the Bus Go Round and Round. That little segment there. Then um, they're like, yeah, let's just set this up as like a show. You know, we could do it for our toys and people. And I guess they have Max come in to do the DJ or disco jockey, as he says. Um, and they end up doing the bit. They have doing the show. Max comes out. He's wearing a wig. He's like being the disc jockey of the whole program. And all the kids come out. There's four of them. There's like number four, number three, number two, number one. They, and each of them have a song. Um, and that's actually kind of cool. They have they incorporate these nursery rhyme kind of songs into like, like disco pop kind of songs. They're not like the old songs you listen to it's like they, they they jazz them up for the show and they have a good time and uh i think one oh, crap there was one of them there was the last one too what is the i can't remember the twinies names because they are just <laughs> I, I if i remember rightly it's it's jake and he couldn't pick his favorite so doodle just said just sing a mixture of them and he literally just does a medley yeah of all of his favorite songs yeah he does and um, it's like a mashup of all of them. It was pretty cool, mm-hmm. and then won the won the crowd over with it. It's like you want more of it. I'll give you more of it. <laughs> um, it's that's the basic gist of the episode. I mean, there's really nothing else to, for details wise. I mean, I guess there is a controversy with the episode later on in later years. Yes, there was. It, it it's interesting because Max was portraying a famous uh, disc jockey in the UK. And he, uh, the, the said disc jockey had issues later on and it's a bit controversy and just... Uh, Do you want me to fully explain? You can fully explain that because I didn't really under... Okay. <clears throat> understand. Okay, so basically, um, one thing I kind of find um, weird with this... Um, this controversy is that when people flagged this episode up, because this was originally made in 2001, this episode, back mm-hmm. when uh, this person that Max was impersonating was well loved and pretty much um, people didn't know about his background. And this was the famous disc jockey, but now known famous pedophile, Jimmy Savile who used to host things like Top of the Pops and Jim Will Fix It and things like that. This episode was made in 2001, back when everybody loved him and didn't know he was a pedo. It was a couple of months after Jimmy Savile died in 2011. I think he died in the November, so it must have been like early 2012 that things about him started to come out, and apparently he was a very very abusive man he basically abused kids he would sexually assault women that kind of thing and when this all came out because the people he his victims wouldn't come out about it because either they were scared that no one would believe them or they'd be told to keep quiet because you don't want to hurt mr savile's reputation that kind of thing so 
I totally understand why why the episode got kind of, I guess, unofficially banned because you don't want people to kind of know about that thing. But the one thing is when the the mum like these parents were saying, like, how can they share an episode like that with Jimmy Savile? Nah, 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 nah. It's like seriously, think about the context. This was made in 2001. It was ten years before he died, and nine years before we would find out about his dark background. So this so that's what I find weird about it. Not because I'm biased to the tweeners, it's because you've got to think about the context. Yes, mm-hmm. I can understand it's very insensitive to show someone like that, but you have to think. They they didn't think about it, you know, back then. Because I mean, if the episode had been made in 2011 or 2012 or anything like that, naturally they wouldn't do that. They would censor that or you know that kind of thing. You wouldn't naturally do that. But the fact that it was 2001 when they made it, they didn't know about his dark background. Hence, basically, that's what happened, you know. And um, on a lighter note, to show you how much of a hardcore Tweeny fan, I have this album on my phone with with a couple of songs. I have, Mm. yes, I have Have Fun Go Mad, Number One, Do the Lollipop, I Believe in Christmas, Best Friends Forever, Bananas, Light Up the World, Starlight, Mega Mix Party, uh, Mega Mix Part One, Mega, Mega Mix Part Two, I Can't. Uh, can't stop tapping my feet. Gonna build a house. Come on, feel the music. Rhythm of the music, and and I like to be a bubble. Mind you, she's twenty five years old, and she has that on her phone. I mean, you you've heard one of them when we did the Hanna Barbera podcast on Cinema Royale. Basically, you know, when I found, you know, I said, "Oh, I'm doing a podcast with another British person. This is so cool." So. I, in honor of that, tonight's broadcast is also brought to you by, and I played the chorus of Do the Lollipop. You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's. Uh, I, I mean, think... I am so, so old school with that. I even know the rap bit of Do the Lollipop. <sighs> Give me that mic. Yeah, this is what I like. Coming at you with a funky rhyme. When the tweet o'clock says it's time, I'll see you jumping. It's true. Gonna travel those platform shoes. Get a message from me to you. Gonna show you how to do it. Do it. Can you party popping? That was slightly sad because of the beard, but hey. But, like, there's probably gonna be some British kids who are my age and be like, oh my god, she does know that. She is so awesome. Shut the fuck up. It's okay. The show, like, okay, the show itself is just like, I can appreciate the costumes and the animatronic head motions. It, like I said, it reminds me of like those shows with costumes like Teletubbies and other stuff like that, like maybe Barney at most and with the sh- stuff like that. It is a kid's show. It's clearly a kid's show for kids under the age of 10 years old at most. And, uh, yeah. It, I wouldn't really watch it again. I give props to the characters. They're fun. The style of the show is fun for kids. It's for kids, at least. And I I will admit, it did kind of creep me out with the designs at first, because the head and the face just didn't seem, like, kosher to me. So, um... It's it's weird how... Sorry, it's weird how, like, uh, when the tweenies used to go outside and they interact with normal humans and stuff. Thinking about it now, it's amazing how they look so creepy and stuff, especially their, like, outdoor outfits. They had different, like, costumes for, like, when they went outside, maybe because they were, like, radio controlled or whatever. And also the kids were, like, proper hand puppets. But I'm amazed the adults would see, like, Judy and Max and not freak out as if this is normal life. As if there are multicolored people roaming the earth. You know, there's a species of alien or some kind of species of human called tweenies and they just wander about the earth going to get the newspaper from the news agents or corner shop or whatever, you know? I was like, oh, these freaky people have come to our sea life centre. Yeah, we're like, two adults and four children, please. Yeah, that's fine. And then they walk away and then the person will be like, ah! <laughs> Mr. Boxer! Mr. Boxer! <laughs> So, I mean, I only recommend this show for young kids, you know. If you're raising a kid, you just put the show on, you know, it's it's British, you know, it's the alternative to the American... Don't think about it too much. 
Don't no. think about the plots too much. No, it's a kids show. That's remember what's... the historical context. Remember that historical context and just sit down, watch it with your kids and shut up. Yeah, it's a, it's a good alternative because in America, you have the PBS shows. For Brits, it, this is a, their alternative and it's great to see diversity into programming yeah. such as this. If you're a parent that has a very low tolerance level to things, would you rather be hey, had the tweenies or super de duper? <laughs> actually, speaking of PBS, actually, Steph, you have a show that premiered on PBS January 25th, 1999, which is turning 20 this week. Where are we going? I don't know. How do we get there? Come on, let's go. Me and you and Superman. Come along and see what's new. We're doing the things that animals do. Yes, Superman. And actually, I do remember growing up with this. Uh, not like when it first came out, but when we first discovered Sky Television. And <coughs> excuse me, I must have been about like eleven or something or ten when I dis- or maybe even nine, when I discovered a channel that we had over in the UK on Sky called Discovery Kids. And uh, with Discovery Kids, I remember learning about a lot of different programs like Popular Mechanics for Kids, uh, Time Blazers, uh, Flyby, Brain. It was a Canadian program like that talked about like uh, facts and whatever and things like that. And one of these programs was the Boomer Foo. And I want to give a special shout out to Kevin Persia of Defunct Land, excuse me, or Defunct TV, um, who re- who did an episode on Sabumafu. And I completely forgotten about this program because it occasionally would come into my head. And I thought, what on earth was this program called? And it was Sabumafu. So basically, Sabumafu, uh, it's not fictional, it's basically. Um, a program about animals so if you're an animal lover you will love this and it has two people who are as kids you thought they were awesome but as adults you think which which brother would i like to screw first <laughs> which is, which are the which are the craft brothers hence Sabumafu with the craft brothers um chris and martin craft or krat 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 Krat, Krat brothers, um, they have a special place called Animal Junction where they learn about all the different animals all over the world. And they have a very special friend called Sabumafu or Zabu who happens to be a lemur, not a ring-tailed lemur, the other kind that isn't a ring-tailed lemur and I've forgotten what it's called. I think it's like a Madagascan lemur. So he comes along when they call his name and he's there, but he doesn't say much. But we all know Sabu, there are, there's no yakking till he's done some snacking. So I'll get him a snack, he'll eat it, burp and exclaim, excuse me, and then Simba Mafu! And he comes to life as a hand puppet. And he will talk about a character that he couldn't believe. <laughs> You know, he couldn't believe his mind. But who could it be? So then they talk about, he describes the animal and you have to guess who it is. So for this episode that I watched was cats. And he said that there was this creature, very pouncy and fuzzy, with lots of legs. Who could it be? And it turned out it was a kitten. And I just so wish I was one of the crap brothers there. I would have just scooped up all the itty bitty kitties and had them to myself. I mean... Mike has seen me watch this episode because I'm just like, oh, he's and he's just like, for fuck's sake. <laughs> so they learn about different types of cats. So they see the kittens and everything, and play with them, you know. Um, and of course, after a while, um, uh, basically Zabu says he's being kittenish and thing like that, and he has a little song. Um, Oh, God, I can't think what it is when he says about different animals. Hold on. Oh, yeah, one of them, uh, you know, one of them, basically, one of his uh, well-known catchphrases of Sabumafu was Mangasika, which is a Malagasy, Malagasy word, literally meaning cold, but used in the series to mean cool, Mangasika. 
Um, the mystery animal. And then he has a song uh, that's basically like, so yeah, the song of like, so basically he has this song about like saying, I feel so-and-so, how about you? So then afterwards, um, um, they gather up the kittens and Zabu tells a story of when he was in Zabu land. So he was leaping along, leap, leap. So basically uh, he will tell you a story from Zabu land. And then basically after a while when the kittens go home and they play with other creatures like a tiger and a uh, jaguar cub and that kind of thing, you know, and the cougar, they decide the craft brothers are going on an adventure. So they're going to the closet, they're going on a trip. They're going to the closet to grab their stuff and split. And of course, Chris and Martin open up the closet, and all the stuff always falls on them. But they manage to grab their stuff and they're going on a cool adventure. And they don't know what to store. They're coming from the closet and they're headed out the door. So then they go off and explore. Uh, wildlife you know see animals and the wildlife and things like that so then they come back and often they will have a letter from jackie who's one of the animal helpers i think something like that and they will ask questions and whatever so then after that once they've had a fantastic day to talk about all the fun things they did what was their favorite moment and basically the moral of the story is go make yourself an animal friend today and that is the whole basis of <coughs> the boomerfoo <laughs> Yeah, uh, I watch the show as well, of course, as I said. Um, God, there's so much history with this because I know the Crap Brothers. I remember watching the show as a kid. There was a time when I was with a family around the dinner. We have a TV in the kitchen. We watched like PBS and that'd be on. Um, there's a little bit of history too because before Zabuafu, the Crap Brothers had Crap, Crap Creatures, which is a show previously before that, and it was them, a kid. And some, like, creature that talked to them as well. And I went to the store as a kid and got an official Kratz creature stuffy. And it was a warthog. Um, it, it has seen better days. Um, but uh, that's why how much of a fan I was of the Krat Brothers. Because mm. I had this as a kid. So, so what were you saying about the time-traveling warthog? <sighs> Okay, so I... I think make... this story is adorable, by the way. Damn it, you're making me blush now because it's just a child thing of me, okay? Because, mind you, okay, let me a little, little context here. I bought this, I loved it, but I also am a huge fan of Back to the Future, so I love time travel. So I named him Time Traveling <laughs> Warthog, or Time Travel Hog for short, TT hog for short. So he would know he would just go into the past your future and you just like fly around. And I would just have adventures with them, you know, going through time, you know. He has his magic tail, you know, he would just go back in time and go in the future. So I mean Oh <laughs> Isn't he cute? I think okay, I think after this goes out, I don't think there's gonna be a single woman that won't sleep with you now. <laughs> like yeah, women want adorableness and you know I just, like when he told me the story I was like oh you cute pie <laughs> yeah um Sabufu is like that one show and it still holds up I mean it's it oh. teaches kids about animals and um yeah the Crab Brothers are still working today. They are still going at it. I mean, they have different shows now. Uh, they have a show currently on PBS Kids, and it's called Wild Kratz. It's an animated show. But, um, I was about to say. <laughs> um, but they've done other works. Like I said, they did Kratz Creatures before the Zabu Fu. But if you are older than kids and you want more, uh, a more adult or teenage-oriented animal show they've done a show called be the creature that was on national geographic oh they're they are they're uh the really good people i mean um Cr i Chris think Cr more of, i think more of a case of like if i were to check them i'd rather go back in time can i borrow your time traveling warthog to go back and check them <laughs> <laughs> and then just come back to the picture. It's like, I'm pregnant with a crap baby. Like, how did that happen? 
I don't know. They, apparently they said they haven't had sex for 20 years. <laughs> uh, you! You're the woman I met in 1999. <laughs> you haven't aged a day. What happened? Um, Warthog? But it's a cracked creature. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's going to say that Chris is the youngest. He's uh, 49. He's going to be 50 this year. Really? Martin is... Martin is the oldest of the brothers. He's he is fifty three. So uh, I, I always thought like uh, the guy with the brown eyes, Chris, was oldest because he just looked older. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. That's Chris. Yep, and the other one is I think is taller than Chris too. Uh, is Martin? Yeah. Mm. Oh, but yeah. they're but yeah. Zabufu is just mm. great. But anyways, okay, so. I know you're a fan of it, but what would you watch it again? Yeah! In fact, I do! And he has to put up with it, because he's my friend! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I... <laughs> I mean, I appreciate it, because it's just like, that sh it's a show. I mean, I like it. She likes it. It's all good. It's all good. Um, highly recommend it. I mean, um, but I will end this on a somber note. Because Zabufu, who was played by uh, Jovian, he, uh, the, the original lemur in the show, he sadly passed away uh, in 2014. And uh, he lived it to be 20. So I'm just like, so kind of surprised for that lemur to be alive. But yeah, he died in his home. He was at the Duke Lemur Center in Durham, North Carolina. So in honor of Zabufu and Jovian, God bless. Manga Seeker. And now for our finale, we shall be taking a slightly more spookier side. Take it away, Mr. Mixtape. <laughs> ah, no! It's the Grizzly Tales for Gruesome Kids! Oh, no! A tale of cautionary tales for lovers of squeeze. Um, <laughs> the uh, okay, the show, yeah, the show is actually based on stories, books, of course. Mm -hmm. Um, each episode is based on a tale within the books. Um, uh, the ones that Steph showed me, which they're really short, they're actually 10 minutes long, so um, not that bad. One, all right, wait, where's my episode list? I had to look at my episode list here because one was from season one and it was Grandmother's Footsteps. Yes, Grandmother's Footsteps was one of them. It was an old woman telling her grandson a ghost story, but reveals a startling truth at the end. Uh, each of these tales has a twist at the end, as always. It, it's a cautionary tale, you know, it, it sets you up to, to learn something at the end or something like that. Um, it kind of reminds me, if you want a kid's a, a kid's take on um, Tales from the Crypt in a way, because it starts off with a narrator, sets up kind of the the story, and then shows the story itself, and comes back, you know, to end the segment off each time. Um, but this story with Grammar's footsteps is that this kid is in bed, he sees a uh, a ghost in the window, he freaks out, asks for Grammar to come over, and Grammar tells him tells him a story and he keeps like expecting their ghost to be in the story you know where's the ghost where's the ghost grandma where's the ghost grandma and she's like not yet not yet not yet towards the end and he's like so impatient but uh grandma's just freaking me out because she's just like the teeth like there's something about the teeth she's just, like clacking it and then there's one moment where the narrator said she pulls out an eyeball and polishes it i'm like is the kid not freaking out by the eyeball now it's like what the frick <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! You, you go freaked out by it, just thinking it. It's just the narrator just saying it. Grandma took her eye out and gave it a polish, and you just see it just casually doing it. You freaked out by it. I was like, "What the hell?" This grandson was like, "Where's the ghost? Where's the ghost?" And spoiler alert: the twist at the end of this story is that the grandmother was the ghost. <gasps> and she's like, took her head off. Look, here's my head. And she'd vanish into the wall. <laughs> it's, yeah, that was kind of like, 
And then I kind of, it kind of like pulls back too because it, she was telling a story of a, a kid back in the 1800s and the story itself. And he pulled back from the house and you see like tombstone of the kid, you know, because it's based on the true story, apparently. Um, the other one she showed me, which was in season two, uh, which was in 2000, which was five years ago, talking about the 99 show. This is the giant who grew too big for his boots, which was a giant grows to enormous proportions. It kept growing and growing and growing and growing. And uh, yeah, he was a I giant. He needs more space. Wait, that's out of all Scottish when the story is set in Wales. Yeah, he uh, he's a giant. He has a purple tongue with blisters on it because he keeps eating and eating and eating. So when he talks, he has the spit. And he's like, I need more space. And he spits everywhere. Like, spit is everywhere. And that's why you have a raincoat on, umbrellas on, because it's everywhere. Like a Welsh human Daffy Duck. <laughs> You're despicable. <laughs> so, yeah, he, uh, he eats. And he's like, I need more space. You know, at first because he's in the bathtub and he's got his toes in the freaking water hose thing. And, of course, he grows bigger. You know, he goes in the next space. The next, It keeps growing mm. and growing and growing and growing. I need more space. I need more space. He keeps growing. He, he's pretty much in space now in the universe. You know, he's like his feet are on Earth and everything's like grown out. And all of a sudden, the twist is a satellite comes in. He's like, I'm hungry. I need to eat. He eats a satellite. But he's like, don't do that or you'll pop. So he eats it, his tongue gets pricked, and he gets popped into like a balloon. He starts shrinking down. <laughs> so he shrinks down to an itty bitty thing, and he uh, he is slimed by a snail as kind of payback. And he asks for no more space after that because he's a teeny tiny thing now. Um. I mean, these tales are actually pretty cool, actually, you know, because, it, like I said, it's like a kid-friendly version of Tales of Crypt. Even though, funny enough, Tales of Crypt had an animated series, too, later on, which is weird. Um, no, I, the animation, so the intro and outro bits are, like, in claymation. And then... Stop motion, yeah. Stop motion kind of thing. And then the main story is in 2D animation, so... It's actually pretty good animation, and the stories are very well adjusted based upon their stories in the book of uh, the book mm -hmm. series um i would actually i would actually watch more of these episodes and see what kind of stories they have and what mm -hmm. other stories yeah. they adapt because that's pretty well done actually <laughs> yeah and even in uh when they revived the series in 2010 they actually did like the stories in like cgi animation i haven't quite seen i haven't seen those but like in the later series like some of the um hand-drawn animation i guess may have had a bit of cgi touch up to it and whatever but you know yeah i would mm. totally like recommend this if you're into these like scary tales like if you're you like horror and kind of these scary tales mm. um but it's for kids though too so to the two yeah. little kids shows a lot but yeah i would totally <laughs> totally uh recommend you watching it i would watch it again for sure Hee <laughs> hee! yay so at least there's one thing that we both would watch again and once again i think it was wait i said i would watch the movie again would, would you say that was your favorite yeah the ones you recommended yeah aha brilliant I success Oh, success. We finally, yeah. one of us has actually said we will watch again one of our, the other person's favourite. So, yeah. Yeah. I've um, just got to work on you a bit more, mister. Yeah. Same with you. Same with you. I I said I would watch Saboofo again. But that's a show you've already watched, and we we picked it because you watched it so much and you knew about it. So <laughs> that is true. I must say, when we were talking about this, and I said, "Please let me watch the Boomerfu." I, I guess I was just looking for a good excuse to watch the Boomerfu. And he's a kid with a lemur. I can't I believe know. my mind. You just said that. I can't believe my mind. <laughs> so anyway, that was the podcast. So, 
hope you guys enjoyed this video um if there's any programs you remember watching that were first broadcasted in 1999 Pop them down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed the second episode of our podcast, give it a big thumbs up. If you want to keep up to date with what we're doing, subscribe to Mike and to me on our social medias and our YouTube channels. And don't forget to click the little bell button so you can keep up to date and notified. So thank you so much for watching this uh, podcast. Next time, Mike will be hosting again because we're doing this thing where we take turns and hosting. So it'll be Mike's turn again. And... We don't know what the theme will be. It will be a surprise because we don't even know. <laughs> right, Mike? Right. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching, guys. Stay dramatic. Adios, amigos. Ah. Fade to black. <laughs>